I rented a remote cabin in the mountains with my friends for a weekend retreat. We were excited to get away from the city and spend some time in nature. The drive up was long, but the scenery was breathtaking. When we arrived at the cabin, we were surprised to find another car parked outside. We thought maybe it belonged to the owner or another guest who was leaving soon. But as we approached the cabin, we realized the truth, it was already occupied. A man stood on the porch, staring at us with cold, unblinking eyes. He didn't say a word as we approached, just watched us with a look of suspicion. We tried to ask him what he was doing there, but he just shook his head and muttered something about needing a place to stay. He seemed agitated, like he was on edge. We didn't know what to do. We had already paid for the cabin, and we didn't want to leave and waste our money. But at the same time, we didn't feel comfortable staying with this stranger. We tried to reason with him, to convince him to leave peacefully. But he refused to budge, insisting that he had as much right to be there as we did. We didn't know what to do. We were miles away from the nearest town, with no cell service and no way to contact anyone for help. We were stuck, trapped with this stranger in the middle of nowhere. As the sun began to set, we knew we had to make a decision. We couldn't stay in the cabin with this man, it just wasn't safe. But we also couldn't leave without a plan. We decided to spend the night in our car, parked a safe distance away from the cabin. We took turns keeping watch, listening for any sign of movement from the stranger. But the night passed without incident. The man stayed in the cabin, and we stayed in our car, waiting for morning to come. When the sun rose, we decided to try talking to the man again. Maybe in the light of day, he would be more willing to listen to reason. But when we approached the cabin, we found it empty. The man was gone, leaving no trace behind. Relieved, we entered the cabin and began to unpack our things. We were finally able to relax and enjoy our weekend getaway, grateful that the stranger had left us alone. But as the weekend wore on, we couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered in the air. We kept expecting the man to return, to confront us again with his cold, unblinking stare. But he never did. And as we packed up to leave, we were grateful to put the cabin and the mysterious stranger behind us. We didn't know who he was or why he had been there, but we were glad to be rid of him. I was on a solo trip, exploring a foreign country filled with wonders and mysteries. One of the must-see attractions on my list was a remote tourist site tucked away in the heart of the countryside. The locals had told me stories about its beauty and historical significance, so I was excited to see it for myself. As I arrived at the site, I was greeted by friendly locals who seemed eager to show me around. They pointed out the various landmarks and shared intriguing tales about the area's history. Everything seemed normal at first, and I was captivated by the beauty of the surroundings. But as I explored further, I started to notice subtle signs that something was amiss. The local smiles seemed forced, their eyes holding a hint of malice that sent a shiver down my spine. I brushed it off as my imagination playing tricks on me, but the feeling of unease lingered. As I continued to explore, I stumbled upon a secluded area of the site that seemed oddly deserted. Curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to investigate further. That's when I stumbled upon a chilling discovery, hidden in the shadows were traps set up to ensnare unsuspecting tourists. My heart pounded in my chest as I realized the true intentions of the locals. They weren't interested in showing me the wonders of their homeland, they were luring tourists into a deadly trap. Panic surged through me as I realized I could be their next victim. I knew I had to get out of there, and fast. But as I turned to leave, I realized I was surrounded. The locals had closed in around me, their faces twisted with malicious intent as they advanced towards me. I tried to reason with them, to plead for mercy, 
but they only laughed in response. It was clear they had no intention of letting me go. I was nothing more than prey to them, a pawn in their twisted game. With no other option, I bolted, running as fast as my legs could carry me. Adrenaline coursed through my veins as I dodged the traps and obstacles in my path, desperate to escape the clutches of my pursuers. But no matter how fast I ran, they were always right behind me, their mocking laughter echoing in my ears. I pushed myself to the brink of exhaustion, fueled by fear and desperation as I fought to stay one step ahead. Just when I thought I couldn't run any longer, I saw it, a glimmer of hope on the horizon. It was a road, stretching out before me like a lifeline in the darkness. With renewed determination, I pushed myself forward, willing my weary legs to carry me to safety. As I reached the road, I didn't stop running. I kept going until I found help, until I was safe from the sinister trap that had nearly claimed my life. Looking back, I realize how lucky I was to escape with my life. We were excited for our island expedition tour, a family adventure filled with the promise of exploration and discovery. As our boat set sail, we marveled at the beauty of the ocean, the salty breeze filling our lungs with anticipation. But as the hours passed, the excitement gave way to unease. The sky darkened, and ominous clouds loomed on the horizon, signaling an approaching storm. We glanced nervously at each other, wondering if we should turn back, but the captain assured us we were safe. Suddenly, without warning, the storm hit with ferocious intensity. Waves crashed against the boat, tossing us around like rag dolls. Panic swept over us as we clung to each other, praying for the storm to pass. When the chaos finally subsided, we found ourselves adrift in the vast expanse of the ocean. Our boat was nowhere to be seen, lost to the fury of the storm. Fear gripped our hearts as we realized we were stranded on a deserted island with no way to contact the outside world. For three long days, we struggled to survive, rationing what little food and water we had brought with us. We searched the island for signs of civilization, but found nothing but dense jungle and deserted beaches. Each passing hour brought with it a creeping sense of despair, as we wondered if we would ever be rescued. We huddled together at night, listening to the eerie sounds of the jungle, praying for a miracle. And then, on the morning of the fourth day, our prayers were answered. A passing boat spotted us on the shore, waving frantically to catch their attention. Relief flooded through us as we realized we were finally going to be rescued. As the boat approached, we scrambled to gather our belongings, eager to leave the island behind us. But as we boarded the boat, a chilling realization dawned on us, we were not alone. There, standing on the shore, was a figure shrouded in darkness, watching us with cold, unseeing eyes. Fear washed over us as we realized we had not been alone on the island after all. We whispered nervously to each other, wondering who, or what, the mysterious figure could be. But before we could find out, the boat pulled away from the shore, leaving the island and its secrets behind us. As we sailed away, we couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched, that the darkness that had haunted us on the island had followed us onto the boat. We huddled together, clinging to each other for comfort, as we prayed for safety. Hours passed, and still the figure lingered in our minds, a shadowy presence lurking just beyond our reach. We tried to push the thoughts away, to focus on the relief of being rescued, but the fear remained, gnawing at the edges of our sanity. It wasn't until we reached the safety of the mainland that we finally allowed ourselves to breathe a sigh of relief. We were safe, rescued from the deserted island and the unknown horrors that had lurked there. Jessica, Sarah, Chris, and I packed our gear and set off for the remote forest, filled with anticipation for the adventures that awaited us. 
As we ventured deeper into the woods, the air grew thick with tension. We couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched, that unseen eyes were tracking our every move. But we pushed the thought aside, dismissing it as paranoia. That is, until we stumbled upon the group of locals. They emerged from the shadows, their faces twisted into scowls of hostility. We tried to greet them with friendly smiles, but they only glared at us, their eyes filled with suspicion and malice. We quickly realized that they didn't take kindly to outsiders invading their territory. They muttered threats under their breath, warning us to leave before things turned ugly. But we were determined to enjoy our camping trip, so we tried to reason with them, explaining that we meant no harm and just wanted to spend some time in nature. Our words fell on deaf ears. The locals grew increasingly agitated, their voices rising in anger as they accused us of trespassing on their land. Suddenly, without warning, one of them lunged at Chris, knocking him to the ground. Sarah screamed in terror as the others rushed to his aid, trying to fend off our attackers. I felt a surge of adrenaline as I fought to protect my friends, but the odds were stacked against us. The locals were outnumbered and overpowering, their blows raining down on us with savage ferocity. Desperate and outnumbered, we knew we had to get out of there, and fast. With a final burst of energy, we broke free from our attackers and fled into the woods, our hearts pounding in our chests as we ran for our lives. We didn't stop running until we reached the safety of our campsite, where we collapsed in exhaustion, shaken but alive. We huddled together, our bodies bruised and battered, as we tried to make sense of what had just happened. But even as we caught our breath, we couldn't shake the feeling of dread that lingered in the air. We knew that the locals were still out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for another opportunity to strike. Terrified and traumatized, we packed up our campsite and made our way back to civilization, vowing never to return to that remote forest again. I booked to stay at a luxurious tropical resort, eager for some much-needed relaxation and sunshine. The pictures online promised pristine beaches, crystal-clear waters, and five-star service, the perfect escape from the stresses of everyday life. But as soon as I arrived, I knew something was off. The staff greeted me with forced smiles, their eyes filled with a coldness that sent a shiver down my spine. I tried to brush off the feeling of unease chalking it up to jet lag and exhaustion from the long flight. As I settled into my room, the wind outside began to pick up, the palm trees swaying ominously in the breeze. I checked the weather forecast and saw that a hurricane was heading our way, but the resort assured me that they had everything under control. But as the storm grew closer, it became clear that the resort was ill-prepared for the impending disaster. The winds held outside, rattling the windows and sending waves crashing against the shore. And then, just as the storm reached its peak, the power went out, plunging the resort into darkness. I tried to remain calm, reminding myself that hurricanes were a common occurrence in this part of the world. But as the hours passed and the storm raged on, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was seriously wrong. I ventured out into the hallway, hoping to find some answers from the resort staff. But the corridors were deserted, the only sound the howling of the wind and the pounding of the rain against the roof. I made my way to the lobby, where I found a group of other guests huddled together, their faces pale with fear. They whispered in hushed tones, exchanging rumors and speculations about what was happening outside. But no one had any answers. The staff were nowhere to be found, and the phones and internet were down, cutting off all communication with the outside world. As the night wore on, the storm showed no signs of letting up. I returned to my room, feeling more anxious and isolated than ever before. And that's when I heard it, a strange scratching sound coming from outside my window. I peered outside, straining to see through the darkness and rain. And that's when I saw them, figures moving in the shadows, their eyes gleaming with a sinister light. 
I felt a chill run down my spine as I realized that the resort staff were not the only ones hiding dark secrets. The storm had brought something else with it, something far more dangerous. I knew I had to get out of there, and fast. I packed my bags and made my way to the exit, praying that I could find a way to escape before it was too late. But as I stepped outside, I was met with a scene of chaos and destruction. The resort was in shambles, the buildings battered and broken by the fury of the storm. And then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw them, the figures from before, lurking in the shadows, their eyes fixed on me with a hunger that sent a chill down my spine. I turned and ran, the sound of my footsteps drowned out by the howling of the wind. I didn't stop running until I reached the safety of the beach, where I collapsed in exhaustion, the sand sticking to my skin as I gasped for breath. But even as I caught my breath, I knew that my ordeal was far from over. The storm had passed, but the danger still lurked in the shadows, waiting for another opportunity to strike. I knew I had to find help, and fast. I stumbled along the beach, searching for any sign of civilization. And then, just when I thought all hope was lost, I saw it, a boat on the horizon, its lights cutting through the darkness like a beacon of hope. I waved my arms frantically, shouting for help as the boat drew nearer. And then, finally, I saw them, the crew rushing to my aid, their faces filled with relief as they pulled me aboard. I collapsed on the deck, tears of gratitude streaming down my face as I realized that I was safe, for now, at least. But as the boat carried me away from the deserted resort, I knew it was finally over. We rented a ski lodge for a winter vacation, excited for some family time and outdoor fun in the snow. But as soon as we arrived, things felt off. The air was chilly, and the lodge had a strange, eerie vibe to it. We brushed off our initial unease, chalking it up to the remote location and the cold weather. But as we settled into our rooms and unpacked our bags, I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. That night, as we gathered around the fireplace for a cozy evening in, strange things began to happen. Shadows flickered and danced along the walls, and we heard strange noises echoing through the halls. At first, we tried to laugh it off, attributing the strange occurrences to the old age of the lodge and the creaks and groans of the building settling in the cold. But as the night wore on, the disturbances grew more frequent and more unsettling. We heard footsteps echoing through the halls, even though we were the only ones staying at the lodge. Doors creaked open and slammed shut on their own, and objects seemed to move of their own accord. I tried to convince myself that it was just my imagination, that there was a logical explanation for everything that was happening. But deep down, I knew that something more sinister was at play. As the days passed, the disturbances only grew worse. We woke up to find our belongings scattered around the room, and strange symbols drawn in the snow outside our window. I tried to ignore the signs, to focus on enjoying our vacation and spending time with my family. But the sense of unease only grew stronger with each passing day, until it felt like we were living in a nightmare. And then, one night, things took a terrifying turn. We were woken up by the sound of screams echoing through the lodge, and we rushed out of our rooms to investigate. What we found was beyond anything we could have imagined. The walls were covered in blood, and the air was thick with the stench of death. It was as if the spirits of the past guests were reliving their final moments, trapped in an endless cycle of torment and suffering. We knew then that we had to get out of there, and fast. We grabbed our things and made a run for it, the screams of the spirits echoing in our ears as we fled into the night. We didn't stop running until we reached the safety of the nearest town, or we collapsed in exhaustion, gasping for breath as we tried to process what had just happened. It took us a long time to recover from our ordeal, and even now, years later, the memories still haunt us. We never found out what happened at that ski lodge, or why it was haunted by the spirits of past guests. But one thing is for sure, 
We'll never forget the terror we experienced that winter, and the chilling realization that some nightmares are all too real. I signed up for a safari tour in Africa, excited to experience the breathtaking landscapes and see majestic wildlife up close. But what started as an adventure of a lifetime quickly turned into a nightmare. As our jeep rumbled across the savannah, the sun beating down on us, I couldn't help but feel a sense of awe at the fastness of the wilderness around us. But then, without warning, the engine sputtered and died, leaving us stranded in the middle of nowhere. At first, we tried to remain calm, hoping that our guide could fix the problem and get us back on the road. But as the minutes turned into hours and the sun began to set, panic started to set in. We were in the heart of the African wilderness, miles from civilization, with no way to call for help. And as the darkness closed in around us, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. We huddled together in the jeep, listening to the sounds of the night, the distant roar of lions, the eerie calls of nocturnal birds. But there was something else out there, something lurking in the shadows, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. I tried to tell myself it was just my imagination, but deep down, I knew something was wrong. And then, just as I was about to suggest that we make a run for it, I heard it, the sound of footsteps, crunching through the underbrush. My heart pounded in my chest as I strained to see through the darkness, searching for any sign of movement. And then, emerging from the shadows, I saw them, a pair of eyes gleaming in the moonlight, fixed on us with a predatory stare. I tried to call out to our guide, but fear had paralyzed me, rendering me unable to speak. All I could do was watch in horror as the figure drew closer, its movements slow and deliberate. And then, just when I thought all hope was lost, I heard the sound of another vehicle approaching. It was our guide, returning with help. With a surge of relief, I watched as the figure melted back into the darkness, disappearing into the night. We were safe, for now, at least. I boarded the cruise ship with excitement, looking forward to a week of relaxation and luxury at sea. The ship was massive, gleaming in the sunlight as it towered over the dock. But as soon as I stepped on board, a sense of unease settled over me. At first, everything seemed normal, the crew was friendly, the other passengers were chatting and laughing as they settled into their cabins. But as the days passed, I began to notice that something was off. People started disappearing, at first, it was just one or two passengers who failed to show up for dinner or didn't return to their cabins at night. But soon, it became a regular occurrence, with more and more passengers vanishing without a trace. At first, I tried to rationalize it, maybe they had fallen overboard, or gotten lost in the maze of corridors below deck. But deep down, I knew that something more sinister was at play. I started to keep a close eye on my fellow passengers, watching for any signs of suspicious behavior. But no matter how hard I looked, I couldn't shake the feeling that the killer was hiding in plain sight, blending in with the crowd. As the days passed, the atmosphere on board grew tense and paranoid. People whispered in hushed tones, casting suspicious glances at their fellow passengers as they moved through the ship. I tried to stay calm, to reassure myself that I was safe, but the fear nodded me from the inside, a constant presence that I couldn't shake. And then, one night, it happened, I was walking back to my cabin after dinner when I heard a scream echoing through the corridors. My heart pounded in my chest as I followed the sound, my footsteps echoing in the empty halls. When I reached the source of the scream, I froze in horror, a woman lay crumpled on the floor, her throat slashed open, a pool of blood spreading out around her. I stumbled back in shock, bile rising in my throat as I realized that the killer was still on board, still hunting for their next victim. I knew that I had to do something, 
to find a way to stop the killer before they struck again. But I was paralyzed by fear, unable to think clearly as the panic threatened to overwhelm me. I tried to alert the crew, to tell them what had happened, but they brushed me off, dismissing my claims as the ramblings of a hysterical passenger. Desperate for help, I turned to my fellow passengers, hoping that someone would listen to me, would believe me. But they too turned a blind eye, too consumed by their own fear to offer any assistance. As the days passed, the body count continued to rise, each new victim adding to the sense of dread that hung over the ship like a dark cloud. I knew that I couldn't stay on board any longer, that I had to find a way to escape before it was too late. But the ship was like a prison, its towering walls and endless corridors trapping me in a nightmare from which there was no escape. I tried to keep a low profile, to blend in with the crowd as I searched for a way off the ship. But everywhere I turned, I was met with dead ends and locked doors, each one a reminder of the trap that I was caught in. And then, just when I had all but given up hope, I stumbled upon a lifeboat hidden away on one of the lower decks. It was a slim chance, but it was my only hope of escape. I waited until nightfall, when the ship was shrouded in darkness and the crew was distracted, before slipping away from my cabin and making my way down to the lifeboat. I climbed inside, my heart pounding in my chest as I cast one last glance back at the ship that had become my prison. And then, with a silent prayer on my lips, I pushed off into the darkness, leaving behind the horror that had haunted me for so long. I decided to backpack through Europe, eager to explore new places and immerse myself in different cultures. Staying in hostels seemed like the perfect way to meet fellow travelers and save some money along the way. Little did I know, my journey would take a terrifying turn when I checked into a rundown hostel in a remote village. As I arrived at the hostel, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that washed over me. The building looked like it had seen better days, with peeling paint and a crumbling facade. But I was tired from a long day of traveling, so I brushed off my concerns and checked into my room. Inside, the atmosphere was equally grim. The walls were bare, the furniture old and worn. And there was something about the other guests that made my skin crawl. They seemed to watch me with cold, calculating eyes, their expressions unreadable. I tried to ignore the feeling of dread that settled in the pit of my stomach as I settled into my bunk for the night. But as I lay there in the darkness, listening to the sound of my own heartbeat, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. I tried to tell myself it was just my imagination, that I was overreacting to a stressful situation. But then, in the dead of night, I heard it, the sound of whispered voices, coming from the hallway outside my room. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest, as I strained to make out what was being said. But the voices were too faint, too muffled to decipher. All I could do was lie there in the darkness, paralyzed by fear. And then, just as suddenly as they had started, the voices stopped. The silence that followed was deafening, broken only by the sound of my own ragged breathing. I lay there for what felt like hours, too afraid to move, too afraid to sleep. But eventually, exhaustion got the better of me, and I drifted off into an uneasy slumber. While I woke the next morning, I was relieved to find that the other guests were gone. But as I made my way downstairs to the common area, I realized that something was horribly wrong. The hostel was deserted, the air thick with a sense of foreboding. And then, just as I was about to leave, I heard it, the sound of footsteps echoing through the empty corridors. I turned to see who it was, my heart pounding in my chest, but there was no one there. Just an empty hallway, stretching out before me like a maze. I tried to tell myself it was just my imagination, that I was letting my fear get the better of me. But deep down, I knew something was terribly wrong. I made my way to the front desk, desperate to find someone, anyone, who could help me. But the receptionist was nowhere to be found, and the phone lines were dead. 
panic surged through me as I realized I was truly alone, trapped in this deserted hostel with no way to escape. But then, just as I was about to give in to despair, I heard a voice behind me. I turned to see one of the other guests standing in the doorway, a look of concern on their face. They explained that the hostel had been evacuated due to a gas leak and that everyone had been moved to a nearby hotel. Relief washed over me as I followed them out of the hostel and into the sunlight. I had escaped the nightmare and skated. We were all excited to hit the road for our cross-country road trip. The open highway stretched out before us, promising adventure and new experiences at every turn. But little did we know, our journey would take a chilling turn when we made the fateful decision to pick up a hitchhiker in the middle of nowhere. At first, the hitchhiker seemed harmless enough. He was polite and friendly, and he thanked us profusely for giving him a ride. But as we drove on, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off about him. He seemed nervous, constantly glancing over his shoulder as if he was being followed. And then, when we asked him where he was headed, his answer sent a shiver down my spine. He told us he was running from someone, someone dangerous. He wouldn't say who or why, only that he needed to get as far away as possible. Alarm bells went off in my head, but it was too late to turn back now. We were already miles away from the nearest town, with no other cars in sight. As we drove on, the hitchhiker grew increasingly agitated, his eyes darting back and forth as if he was expecting trouble at any moment. And then, without warning, he asked us to pull over. We hesitated, unsure of what to do, but he insisted, saying he needed to get out of the car right away. Reluctantly, we pulled over to the side of the road, and he practically leaped out of the car, disappearing into the darkness without a backwards glance. We sat there in stunned silence, wondering what had just happened. But before we could even begin to process it, we heard the sound of approaching footsteps. I turned to look out the window and felt my blood run cold. There, emerging from the shadows, was a group of menacing figures, the hitchhiker's pursuers. Without a word, they surrounded the car, blocking off any possible escape route. My heart pounded in my chest as I realized we were completely at their mercy. We tried to reason with them, to explain that we had no idea who the hitchhiker was or why they were after him. But they weren't interested in our excuses. They only had one thing on their minds, revenge. They forced us out of the car at gunpoint, hurting us into the back of a fan parked nearby. We were helpless to resist as they bound our hands and blindfolded us, leaving us at the mercy of our captors. For hours, we drove through the darkness, the sound of the engine roaring in my ears as we were taken deeper and deeper into the unknown. I had no idea where we were going or what they planned to do with us, but I knew it couldn't be good. Finally, the van came to a stop, and we were roughly pulled out and led into a rundown building. The air was thick with the smell of decay and I could hear the sound of distant voices echoing through the darkness. We were shoved into a room and left alone, the door slamming shut behind us with a finality that sent chills down my spine. I knew we were in deep trouble, but I refused to give up hope. We spent what felt like an eternity locked away in that room, our minds racing with fear and uncertainty. But just when all hope seemed lost, we heard the sound of approaching footsteps. I held my breath as the door swung open, revealing a group of armed men standing on the other side. But instead of attacking us, they untied our restraints and led us out of the building. It turned out they were part of a local militia group who had been tracking the hitchhiker for weeks. They had been planning to apprehend him and his accomplices, but they never expected to find us caught in the crossfire. I booked to stay at a mountain retreat for a weekend getaway, hoping to unwind and relax away from the hustle and bustle of city life. 
The pictures online showed a cozy lodge nestled amidst snow-covered trees, promising a serene escape from the stresses of everyday life. But as soon as we arrived, I could sense that something was off. The air was heavy with an eerie stillness, and the lodge itself seemed to loom ominously against the backdrop of the snow-covered mountains. Ignoring my unease, I checked us in and we settled into our room, eager to start our weekend of relaxation. But as the sun began to set and the snow started to fall harder, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. That night, as we gathered around the fireplace in the common area, I noticed a strange tension in the air. The other guests seemed on edge, whispering amongst themselves and casting nervous glances around the room. I tried to dismiss it as my imagination running wild, but when I caught sight of a figure lurking in the shadows outside the lodge, my heart skipped a beat. I told myself it was just a trick of the light, but deep down, I knew something wasn't right. As the night wore on, the storm outside grew fiercer, the wind howling through the trees like a banshee's wail. We huddled closer to the fire, seeking comfort in its warm glow as the darkness pressed in around us. But then, just as I was starting to drift off to sleep, I heard it, a soft scratching sound coming from somewhere outside the lodge. At first, I tried to convince myself it was just the wind, but the sound grew louder and more insistent with each passing moment. I glanced around the room, searching for any sign of what could be causing the noise, but all I could see was darkness and shadows. And then, without warning, the power went out, plunging us into total darkness. Panic gripped me as I groped blindly for a flashlight, my heart pounding in my chest as I struggled to make sense of what was happening. And then, just as suddenly as it had gone out, the power flickered back on, casting a flickering light over the room. But as I looked around, I realized that something was horribly wrong. The other guests were gone, their belongings strewn haphazardly around the room as if they had left in a hurry. I called out for them, but there was no answer. It was as if they had vanished into thin air, leaving behind only their empty rooms as silent testament to their presence. Terrified, I ran to the front door, desperate to escape the lodge and whatever horrors lay within. But when I tried to open it, I found it locked tight, as if it had been sealed shut from the outside. Panic rising in my chest, I pounded on the door, shouting for help until my voice was hoarse. But there was no response, only the echo of my own screams bouncing off the walls of the empty lodge. I retreated to my room locking the door behind me and huddling under the covers as I waited for morning to come. But as the hours dragged on, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching me, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. And then, just when I thought I couldn't take it anymore, I heard the sound of approaching footsteps. I held my breath, listening intently as they drew closer and closer, until they were right outside my door. With a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I realized that I was now alone in the lodge. Whatever was out there, lurking in the darkness, was coming for me. But just as I braced myself for the worst, the door burst open and a group of rescuers stormed into the room, their flashlights cutting through the darkness like beacons of hope. They quickly ushered me out of the lodge and into the safety of their waiting vehicles, explaining that they had received a distress call from someone trapped inside. As we drove away from the lodge, I looked back one last time, my heart heavy with relief and fear. I may have escaped with my life, but the memory of that night would haunt me forever. I signed up for a cultural tour in a foreign country eager to explore new places and learn about different cultures. The tour promised to take us off the beaten path, to places that most tourists never got to see. At first, everything seemed normal, our tour guide was friendly and knowledgeable, leading us through bustling markets and ancient ruins as he regaled us with stories of the country's history and traditions. But as the days passed, I began to notice that something was off. Our tour guide started taking us to more remote locations, places that were far off the tourist trail and seemed to be untouched by modern civilization. 
I tried to brush off my concerns, telling myself that it was all part of the adventure. But deep down, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that settled over me like a dark cloud. And then, one day, our tour guide led us into a dense forest, far away from the main road. As we walked deeper into the woods, the air grew thick with tension, and I felt a sense of dread wash over me. I tried to speak up, to voice my concerns to the others in the group, but they brushed me off, telling me not to worry and to trust our guide. But I couldn't shake the feeling that something was seriously wrong. We were far from any signs of civilization, and there was no one around to help us if things went wrong. As we continued to walk, I noticed that the trees seemed to close in around us, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers grasping for our flesh. And then, just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, we stumbled upon a clearing in the woods, a clearing that was littered with bones. My heart pounded in my chest as I realized what I was looking at, the remains of other tourists who had ventured into these woods and never returned. I tried to scream, to warn the others, but before I could utter a word, our tour guide turned to us with a sinister smile on his face. It was then that I realized the horrifying truth, our tour guide had led us into a forbidden territory, a place where no outsider was ever meant to tread. I knew that we had to get out of there, to escape before it was too late. But as I turned to run, I saw something move in the shadows, something dark and twisted, something that was watching us with hungry eyes. I screamed and stumbled backward, tripping over my own feet as I tried to flee. But it was no use, the creature was upon us, its claws tearing through the air as it lunged for our throats. I thought that I was going to die, that this was the end. But then, just when all hope seemed lost, a group of locals burst out of the trees, driving the creature back with torches and makeshift weapons. They pulled us to safety, leading us out of the forest and back to civilization. And as we emerged from the woods, I knew that I would never forget the horror of what I had seen, the terror of knowing that we had narrowly escaped with our lives. I went on a trip to a remote village in the countryside, seeking to explore the charm of rural life and escape the chaos of the city. The village seemed quaint and peaceful at first glance, with its cobblestone streets and rustic cottages nestled among rolling hills. But as I wandered deeper into the village, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The air was heavy with a palpable sense of unease, and the villagers I passed seemed to regard me with wary eyes, as if they were hiding something. I tried to brush off my unease and immerse myself in the sights and sounds of the village, but the feeling of foreboding only grew stronger with each passing moment. And then, as night fell and the streets grew deserted, I stumbled upon something that chilled me to the bone. Hidden away in a secluded corner of the village, I discovered a group of villagers gathered around a bonfire, chanting in a language I couldn't understand. Their faces were twisted with a fervent intensity, their eyes alight with a fanatical zeal that sent shivers down my spine. I watched in horror as they performed their dark rituals, sacrificing animals and offering prayers to some unseen deity. The air was thick with the scent of blood and incense, and the sound of their chanting echoed through the night like a sinister hymn. Unable to tear my eyes away from the scene unfolding before me, I realized with a sinking feeling that I had stumbled into a living nightmare. These villagers were not the simple, friendly folk I had imagined them to be, they were something else entirely, something dark and sinister. As fear gripped me, I turned to flee, desperate to escape the village and the horrors it contained. But as I made my way through the deserted streets, I realized that I was now alone, the villagers were following me, their eyes gleaming with malice as they closed in around me. I ran faster, my heart pounding in my chest as I struggled to put as much distance between myself and the villagers as possible. But no matter how fast I ran, they were always right behind me, their chanting growing louder and more frenzied with each passing moment. With a surge of adrenaline, I pushed myself harder, ducking down alleyways and side streets in a desperate bid to lose my pursuers. But no matter which way I turned, they were always there, 
closing in on me with each step. Terrified and out of breath, I stumbled and fell, crashing to the ground in a heap as the villagers closed in around me. With nowhere left to run, I braced myself for the worst, my mind racing with thoughts of what horrors awaited me. But then, just when it seemed like all hope was lost, I heard the sound of approaching footsteps. I looked up to see a group of outsiders, travelers like myself, rushing to my aid, their faces grim with determination as they fought off the villagers and pulled me to safety. Together, we fled the village, leaving behind the nightmare that had almost consumed us. And as we made our way back to civilization, I couldn't help but wonder what other dark secrets lay hidden in the remote corners of the world, waiting to be discovered by unsuspecting travelers like myself. We went on a family trip to a ski resort for a winter vacation. It was supposed to be a fun and relaxing getaway, away from the hustle and bustle of our daily lives. The resort was nestled in the mountains, surrounded by pristine snow-covered slopes and towering pine trees. But as we settled into our cozy cabin and prepared to hit the slopes the next day, a sense of unease began to creep over us. The weather forecast had predicted a snowstorm, but none of us expected it to be as severe as what was about to come. The next morning, we woke up to find the world outside blanketed in white. The snow was falling thick and fast, obscuring our view of the mountains and burying everything in its path. We decided to stay inside and wait out the storm, hoping that it would pass quickly and we could resume our vacation as planned. But as the hours turned into days and the snow continued to fall relentlessly, our sense of isolation and vulnerability grew. The power went out, cutting off all communication with the outside world, and the only sound we could hear was the howling of the wind outside. We tried to stay positive and make the best of the situation, playing board games by the fire and telling stories to pass the time. But deep down, we all knew that we were in trouble. The snow was piling up outside, reaching dangerous levels, and there was no sign of it letting up any time soon. As the days dragged on and our food and supplies began to dwindle, panic began to set in. We huddled together in the darkness, listening to the eerie silence outside and wondering if we would ever make it out alive. And then, just when it seemed like things couldn't get any worse, we heard a sound coming from outside the cabin. At first, it was just a faint scratching noise, barely audible over the howling wind. But as it grew louder and more insistent, we realized with growing horror what it was. Someone, or something, was trying to break into the cabin. We scrambled to barricade the doors and windows, but it was no use. Whatever was outside was determined to get in, and there was nothing we could do to stop it. We huddled together in fear as the sound of pounding fists and splintering would fill the air. And then, just when we thought we couldn't take it anymore, the noise suddenly stopped. For a moment, there was silence, a deafening, oppressive silence that seemed to stretch on forever. And then, from somewhere outside, we heard a low, guttural growl that sent shivers down our spines. We knew then that we were not alone on the mountain. There was something out there, something hungry and relentless, lurking in the darkness and waiting for the perfect moment to strike. We stayed huddled together in the cabin, too terrified to move or make a sound. And then, just when we thought all hope was lost, we heard the sound of approaching footsteps outside. We held our breath, waiting for whatever was out there to make its move. But instead of attacking, the footsteps grew fainter and fainter, until they finally faded away into the distance. Relief washed over us as we realized that whatever had been outside had moved on. But our sense of safety was short-lived, as we knew that the danger was far from over. We waited anxiously for the storm to pass, counting down the hours until we could make our escape from the mountain. And when the snow finally stopped falling and the skies cleared, we wasted no time in packing up our things and fleeing the resort. As we made our way down the mountain, we couldn't help but look back over our shoulders, wondering what other horrors lay hidden in the snowy wilderness. But one thing was for certain, 
We would never forget our harrowing ordeal on the mountain and the terror of knowing that we were not alone. I was feeling adventurous, so I decided to explore a remote jungle in South America. I had heard stories about the lush beauty of the rainforest and the thrill of discovering hidden treasures deep within its depths. Armed with my backpack and a sense of excitement, I set off on my journey into the unknown. The jungle was dense and teeming with life, the air thick with humidity and the sounds of chirping insects and rustling leaves. I felt a sense of awe and wonder as I ventured further into the wilderness, eager to see what secrets the jungle held. But as I trekked deeper into the heart of the jungle, I began to feel a sense of unease creeping over me. The trees seemed to close in around me, casting long shadows that danced in the dappled sunlight. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that unseen eyes were following my every move. I tried to push aside my fears and focus on the beauty of my surroundings, but the feeling of being watched only grew stronger with each step I took. And then, just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, I heard the sound of voices ahead. I froze in my tracks, my heart pounding in my chest as I listened to the unfamiliar language being spoken. I knew I should turn back and retreat to safety, but my curiosity got the better of me. I had come this far, and I couldn't resist the urge to see who, or what, was up ahead. I cautiously approached the source of the voices, my senses on high alert as I moved through the dense undergrowth. And then, as I rounded a bend in the trail, I saw them, a group of armed men, dressed in camouflage and carrying rifles. My blood ran cold as I realized what I had stumbled upon, a band of guerrilla fighters, hidden deep within the jungle. I knew I should turn and run, but it was too late. They had already spotted me, and before I could react, they were advancing towards me, their weapons at the ready. I tried to explain that I was just a harmless traveler, that I meant no harm to anyone. But my words fell on deaf ears as the men surrounded me, their faces twisted with suspicion and hostility. I felt a surge of panic rising within me as they accused me of being a spy, of trespassing on their territory with nefarious intentions. I pleaded with them to let me go, but they were having none of it. In a matter of moments, I found myself bound and gagged, my backpack confiscated and my fate hanging in the balance. I didn't know what they were planning to do with me, but I knew it couldn't be good. As they dragged me deeper into the jungle, I struggled against my bonds, desperate to break free and escape. But the guerrilla fighters were relentless, their grip on me tight and unyielding. I was filled with a sense of dread as they led me to their camp, a makeshift settlement hidden deep within the jungle. It was a grim and foreboding place, filled with the sounds of gunfire and the smell of smoke. I knew I had to find a way to escape, to outsmart my captors and make it out of the jungle alive. But as I looked around at the armed men surrounding me, I realized that it wouldn't be easy. I bided my time, waiting for the perfect moment to make my move. And then, when the opportunity presented itself, I acted, breaking free from my captors and making a run for it through the dense undergrowth. I didn't know where I was going or how I was going to make it out of the jungle alive, but I knew I had to keep moving, to stay one step ahead of my pursuers. I pushed myself to the limit, running until my lungs burned and my legs ached, until I thought I couldn't go on any longer. But still, I kept going driven by fear and adrenaline and the desperate desire to survive. And then, just when I thought I couldn't go on any longer, I saw it, a clearing up ahead, bathed in the soft glow of moonlight. It was my chance, my one shot at freedom. I pushed myself harder than ever before, willing my tired legs to carry me forward. And then, with one final burst of energy, I broke through the trees and stumbled out into the open air. I collapsed to the ground, gasping for breath as I looked up at the night sky, grateful to be alive. I didn't know what had become of the guerrilla fighters or if they were still chasing me, but in that moment, it didn't matter. I had made it out of the jungle alive, and nothing else mattered.
I decided to treat myself and some friends to a vacation at an all-inclusive resort in the Caribbean. We were all excited to soak up the sun, relax on the beach, and enjoy some much-needed downtime. But as soon as we arrived at the resort, things started to feel off. The staff seemed friendly enough, but there was something about their smiles that didn't quite reach their eyes. And then there were the other guests. They all seemed to be acting strangely, as if they were hiding something. At first, we tried to ignore our instincts and enjoy our vacation. We spent our days lounging by the pool and exploring the resort, trying to forget about the nagging feeling of unease that lingered in the back of our minds. But as the days went on, things only got worse. We started to notice strange disappearances among the guests, people would check into the resort and then never be seen again. We tried to ask the staff about it, but they brushed off our questions with vague answers and forced smiles. It was clear that something sinister was going on at the resort, and we knew we had to find out what. We decided to do some investigating of our own, sneaking around the resort late at night and eavesdropping on conversations between the staff. What we discovered was chilling, the resort was involved in a human trafficking ring, selling unsuspecting guests to the highest bidder. We knew we had to get out of there before we became victims ourselves, but it wouldn't be easy. The resort was guarded by security cameras and patrols, making it nearly impossible to escape unnoticed. But we refused to give up hope. We came up with a plan to sneak out of the resort under the cover of darkness, using the cover of night to evade the security guards and make our escape. It was risky, but we knew it was our only chance at freedom. We waited until the dead of night, when the resort was quiet and the guards were distracted, and then we made our move. We slipped out of our rooms and crept through the resort, sticking to the shadows and avoiding the security cameras at all costs. Every sound made us jump, every rustle of leaves sending a shiver down our spines. But we pressed on, driven by fear and desperation. We knew that if we were caught, we would likely never make it out alive. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, we reached the edge of the resort and slipped through the gates to freedom. We ran as fast as we could, putting as much distance between ourselves and the resort as possible. And then, just when we thought we were safe, we heard the sound of footsteps behind us. We turned to see a group of security guards in hot pursuit, their faces twisted with anger and determination. We knew we couldn't outrun them forever, so we ducked into the cover of the jungle, hoping to lose them in the dense undergrowth. We stumbled through the darkness, our hearts pounding in our chests as we fought to stay ahead of our pursuers. Every step felt like an eternity, every breath burning in our lungs but we refused to give up. We pushed ourselves harder than we ever thought possible, driven by the knowledge that our lives depended on it. And then, just when we thought we couldn't go on any longer, we saw it, the lights of a nearby town twinkling in the distance. We had made it to safety. We collapsed to the ground, exhausted and terrified, but alive. We had escaped the clutches of the resort and the human traffickers who ran it, and we knew we would never be the same again. I was excited to embark on my solo backpacking adventure across Europe. I had been planning it for months, eager to immerse myself in different cultures, meet new people, and explore the beautiful landscapes. But as I journeyed deeper into the continent, I found myself in a secluded village, far off the beaten path. It was the kind of place you wouldn't find on any tourist map, run-down buildings, narrow streets, and an eerie silence that hung in the air. I checked into a hostel, hoping to rest up before continuing my journey. The place was dingy and run-down, but it was cheap, and I didn't mind roughing it for a night or two. But as the sun set and darkness descended over the village, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. There was a tension in the air, a sense of unease that made my skin crawl. I tried to brush it off and get some sleep, but I found myself tossing and turning, unable to shake the feeling of dread that gnawed at my insides. And then, in the middle of the night, 
I was awakened by the sound of shouting and gunfire. I sprang out of bed, my heart racing as I peered out the window and saw a group of men, armed and dangerous, storming through the streets. I knew I had to get out of there, but as I made my way to the door, I was stopped in my tracks by a knock. My blood ran cold as I realized it was coming from the other side of the door, the hostile staff. I hesitated for a moment, unsure of what to do. But then I heard their voices, urgent and menacing, and I knew I had to act fast. I scrambled out the window and onto the street below, my heart pounding in my chest as I fled into the darkness. I didn't stop running until I reached the outskirts of the village, where I collapsed in exhaustion, gasping for breath as I tried to make sense of what had just happened. It wasn't until later, when I was safely back on the road, that I realized what had happened. I had unwittingly stumbled into the middle of a turf war between rival gangs, and the hostel was their base of operations. I shuddered at the thought of what could have happened if I hadn't escaped when I did. It was a terrifying ordeal, one that would haunt me for the rest of my life. But as I continued on my journey, I couldn't help but feel grateful, grateful to be alive, and grateful to have escaped the clutches of organized crime in that secluded village. We were all pumped up for our road trip through the vast Australian outback. The open road stretched out before us, promising adventure and exploration at every turn. We had stocked up on supplies, packed our bags, and hit the road with excitement coursing through our veins. But as we journeyed deeper into the outback, the landscape grew more desolate, the roads more deserted. There were long stretches where we didn't see another soul for miles and the fastness of the wilderness seemed to swallow us whole. Then, disaster struck. Our car sputtered and coughed, and before we knew it, we were stranded in the middle of nowhere. Panic set in as we realized the gravity of our situation. We were stuck in the outback with no way to call for help, and no idea when, or if, another vehicle would come along. We huddled together by the side of the road, trying to come up with a plan. But as the hours passed and the sun beat down relentlessly, our hope began to fade. It felt like we were trapped in a nightmare, with no way out and no one to help us. Just when we thought things couldn't get any worse, we spotted a group of figures approaching in the distance. Relief flooded through us as we waved them down, hoping they would be able to assist us in our time of need. But as they drew closer, we realized something was off. Their faces were hard and unwelcoming, and there was a dangerous glint in their eyes that sent a shiver down my spine. We tried to explain our situation, to plead for their help, but they just stared at us with cold indifference. It was clear they weren't interested in lending a hand, in fact, they seemed downright hostile. As tensions rose, we began to fear for our safety. We were outnumbered and stranded in the middle of nowhere at the mercy of these strangers who seemed intent on doing us harm. Desperation set in as we realized we were facing a dangerous situation. We had to think fast if we wanted to get out of there alive. With trembling hands, we made a break for it, running as fast as our legs could carry us. We stumbled and fell, our hearts pounding in our chests as we raced through the wilderness, praying we could outrun our pursuers. But they were hot on our heels, their shouts echoing through the barren landscape. It felt like we were running for our lives, with no end in sight and no one to help us. Just when it seemed like we couldn't go on any longer, we spotted a glimmer of hope on the horizon, another vehicle, speeding towards us from the distance. We waved frantically, hoping they would see us and come to our aid. And to our immense relief, they did, pulling up just in time to rescue us from our terrifying ordeal. As we sped away from the scene, leaving the hostile locals far behind us, I felt a wave of gratitude wash over me. We had narrowly escaped a nightmare in the outback, thanks to the kindness of strangers who had come to our rescue.
I rented this beach house for a week, hoping to relax and unwind by the ocean. It seemed perfect, a cozy little cottage right on the water, with a stunning view of the sunset. But as soon as I stepped inside, something felt off. The air was heavy and oppressive, and there was a strange smell lingering in the air, musty and stale, like old sweat. I tried to brush it off, chalking it up to the house being closed up for too long, but the feeling of unease only grew stronger as I explored further. That's when I noticed them, strange symbols carved into the walls, hidden away in the corners of the rooms. They were crude and jagged, like they had been scratched into the plaster with a knife. My heart pounded with fear as I realized that I was not alone in this house, that someone, or something, had been here before me, leaving behind these cryptic messages. I tried to tell myself that it was just a prank, or maybe the work of some bored teenager messing around, but deep down, I knew that there was something darker at play here. As night fell, the feeling of dread only grew stronger. I tossed and turned in bed, unable to shake the feeling that something was watching me from the shadows. And then, just as I was on the brink of sleep, I heard it, a soft, whispering voice, barely audible over the sound of the crashing waves outside. I froze in terror, my heart pounding in my chest as I strained to listen. The voice was faint and indistinct, but there was something undeniably sinister about it, something that sent shivers down my spine. I wanted to run, to scream for help, but something held me rooted to the spot, as if I was paralyzed by fear. And then, just as suddenly as it had started, the whispering stopped, leaving behind an eerie silence that was almost worse than the sound itself. I lay there in the darkness, my heart racing, until exhaustion finally overtook me and I drifted into a fitful sleep. The next morning, I awoke to find the symbols on the walls had multiplied, covering every inch of the room in a twisted web of lines and shapes. Panic seized me as I realized that whatever, or whoever, had been in this house with me was still here, lurking in the shadows, waiting for me to let my car down. With trembling hands, I grabbed my phone and dialed 911, desperate for help. But when I tried to explain the situation to the operator, my words came out in a jumble of fear and confusion. I could hear the skepticism in her voice as she asked if I had been drinking or taking drugs, but I knew that I was sober, that what I was experiencing was real. As I waited for the police to arrive, I huddled in the corner of the room, my eyes fixed on the door, half expecting it to burst open at any moment and reveal the horrors that lay beyond. When the police finally arrived, they found me shaking and hysterical, my hands covered in sweat as I clutched my phone like a lifeline. I tried to explain what had happened, but the words came out in a jumbled mess, and I could see the doubt in their eyes as they listened to my story. But when they went to investigate the symbols on the walls, their skepticism turned to horror, for they found not just carvings, but blood, fresh and still wet, as if it had been spilled only moments before. Panic seized me as I realized that whoever, or whatever, had been in this house with me was still out there, somewhere in the darkness, waiting to strike. The police searched the surrounding area, but they found no sign of anyone else, no footprints, no evidence of forced entry, nothing. In the end, they told me that there was nothing they could do, that whatever had happened in that house was beyond their understanding. I left that beach house that day, vowing never to return, but the memory of what had happened there haunted me for years to come. I set out on my backpacking trip through Southeast Asia with excitement bubbling inside me. The thought of immersing myself in the rich culture and natural beauty of the region filled me with anticipation. I packed my bags, checked my gear, and hit the road, ready for adventure. As I journeyed through the bustling streets of Bangkok and the tranquil rice fields of Vietnam, I felt like I was living the dream. But little did I know. My journey was about to take a dark and terrifying turn. I found myself drawn to the remote jungles of Laos, eager to explore their untamed beauty. The lush greenery and exotic wildlife called out to me, and I couldn't resist the pull of adventure. But as I ventured deeper into the jungle, 
I began to sense that something was off. The air grew heavy with tension, and the sounds of the forest took on a sinister edge. Then, one day, I stumbled upon a group of men lurking in the shadows of the trees. At first, I thought they were just fellow travelers like myself, but as I drew closer, I realized the truth. They were members of a notorious drug cartel. Panic surged through me as I realized the danger I was in. These were not the kind of people you wanted to cross paths within the remote jungles of Laos. I tried to slip away unnoticed, but it was too late. They had already spotted me, and they weren't about to let me leave without a fight. I ran as fast as my legs could carry me, the sound of their shouts echoing through the trees behind me. It felt like I was running for my life, with no idea where to go or how to escape. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't shake them. They were like shadows, always one step behind me, closing in with every passing moment. I stumbled and fell, the jungle floor slick with mud and sweat. My heart pounded in my chest as I scrambled to my feet, desperate to put as much distance between myself and my pursuers as possible. I pushed myself to the limit, ignoring the pain in my muscles and the burning in my lungs. All that mattered was getting away from the cartel and finding safety. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I saw a glimmer of hope on the horizon, a clearing in the trees, with sunlight streaming through the branches above. I ran towards it with all the strength I had left, praying that I would make it out of the jungle alive. And miraculously, I did. As I stumbled into the clearing, I collapsed to the ground, gasping for breath and shaking with fear. But I was safe, for now, at least. I knew I couldn't stay in the jungle any longer. I had to find a way out, back to civilization, back to safety. With a newfound sense of determination, I picked myself up and set off once again, vowing never to venture into the remote jungles of Laos again. I was thrilled to join an expedition to explore the depths of the Amazon rainforest, eager to uncover its hidden mysteries and experience its untouched beauty firsthand. The thought of venturing into one of the most remote and mysterious places on Earth filled me with excitement and anticipation. As our group navigated the treacherous waters of the Amazon River, the dense foliage and eerie silence of the jungle sent shivers down my spine. I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. The unseen eyes were following our every move from the shadows of the trees. Then, one day, as we made our way deeper into the heart of the rainforest, we stumbled upon a clearing where a tribe of indigenous people stood waiting for us. Their faces were painted with intricate designs, and their eyes burned with a fierce intensity that made my blood run cold. At first, I thought they were simply curious about our presence in their territory. But as they approached us with weapons drawn, I realized the truth, they viewed us as trespassers in their sacred land. Panic swept through our group as we realized the gravity of the situation. These were not friendly encounters with the locals, this was a matter of life and death. We tried to communicate with the tribe, to explain that we meant no harm and only sought to explore the wonders of the rainforest. But they remained unmoved, their hostility palpable in the air around us. As tensions escalated, I feared for our safety. We were outnumbered and outgunned, facing off against a tribe that had lived in harmony with the jungle for centuries. With no other choice, we retreated, hoping to find a way out of the rainforest before it was too late. But the tribe was relentless in their pursuit, tracking us through the dense undergrowth with uncanny precision. Every rustle of leaves and every snap of a twig sent chills down my spine knowing that the indigenous people were closing in on us with each passing moment. We pressed on, pushing ourselves to the limit as we raced against time to escape the rainforest and the wrath of the tribe. But no matter how fast we ran, it felt like the jungle itself was working against us, with its labyrinth of vines and roots conspiring to keep us trapped within its grasp. As the days stretched on, exhaustion began to take its toll on our group. We were running on fumes, 
with no food or water to sustain us and the constant threat of danger looming over our heads. But just when it seemed like all hope was lost, we stumbled upon a narrow path leading out of the jungle. With renewed determination, we pushed forward, driven by the prospect of freedom and safety. And finally, after what felt like an eternity, we emerged from the depths of the Amazon rainforest, battered and bruised but alive. As we looked back at the dense canopy of trees behind us, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief wash over me. We had survived the ordeal, escaping the clutches of the tribe and the unforgiving wilderness of the rainforest. And though the memories of our harrowing encounter would stay with me forever, I was grateful to be alive and back in the safety of civilization once more. We were excited about our camping trip to the ancient redwood forest of California. The thought of spending time surrounded by towering trees and lush greenery filled us with anticipation. Little did we know, our idyllic getaway would soon turn into a nightmare beyond our wildest imagination. As we ventured deeper into the forest, we stumbled upon a remote area that seemed untouched by civilization. Curiosity got the better of us, and we decided to explore further. That's when we saw it, a hidden compound nestled among the trees, surrounded by a thick wall of foliage. At first, we thought it might be an abandoned campsite or an old ranger station. But as we got closer, we realized it was something far more sinister, a cult compound. The hairs on the back of my neck stood on end as we approached the compound, a sense of unease settling over me like a heavy blanket. The air seemed to grow colder, and a feeling of dread washed over me as we stepped through the gates. Inside, we were met with a group of people dressed in plain robes, their faces obscured by hoods. They moved with an eerie sense of purpose, their eyes cold and calculating as they watched us approach. We tried to turn back, to leave the compound and forget we ever stumbled upon it. But it was too late, we were surrounded trapped within the confines of the cult's domain. As the hours passed, we realized the true horror of our situation. The cultists had no intention of letting us leave, and we were forced to play along with their twisted games if we wanted to survive. Each day brought new challenges and dangers, as we navigated the treacherous terrain of the compound and fought to stay one step ahead of our captors. It was like something out of a nightmare, with no end in sight. But we refused to give up hope, clinging to the belief that we would find a way out of this hellish nightmare. We banded together, drawing strength from each other as we faced unimaginable horrors in our quest for freedom. And finally, after what felt like an eternity, we saw our chance to escape. In a daring move, we broke free from our captors and made a run for it, sprinting through the dense undergrowth of the forest with all the strength we could muster. Miraculously, we made it to safety, our hearts pounding in our chests as we collapsed on the forest floor, gasping for breath. We had survived the cult compound, emerging from the ordeal battered and bruised but alive. As we looked back at the compound from a safe distance, I couldn't help but shudder at the thought of what we had endured. It was a nightmare I wouldn't soon forget, a harrowing ordeal that would haunt me for the rest of my days. We chartered a luxury yacht for a week-long vacation in the Caribbean, excited for a relaxing and fun-filled getaway with the family. The sun was shining, the sky was clear, and the ocean stretched out before us like a vast, shimmering expanse of blue. But our leisurely cruise took a terrifying turn when we encountered a group of modern-day pirates. They came out of nowhere, their speedboat racing toward us with alarming speed. At first, we thought it was some kind of mistake, maybe they were just passing by, or maybe they were even in trouble and needed our help. But as they drew closer, we could see the malicious glint in their eyes, the guns and knives gleaming in their hands. Panic gripped us as we realized what was happening, we were being hijacked, 
our peaceful vacation shattered by the brutal reality of piracy on the high seas. The pirates boarded our yacht with frightening speed, overwhelming us with their sheer numbers and the force of their weapons. They shouted and cursed, their faces contorted with rage as they herded us together on the deck. We were helpless, at the mercy of these ruthless criminals who seemed intent on taking everything we had, our money, our belongings, even our lives. I felt a surge of fear and adrenaline course through me as I looked around at my family, their faces pale with terror. We were trapped, with nowhere to run and no one to turn to for help. The pirates ransacked the yacht, tearing through our belongings with reckless abandon as they searched for anything of value. They laughed and jeered, their voices echoing across the deck as they reveled in their victory. But as the hours dragged on, their mood grew darker and more volatile. They became increasingly agitated, their tempers flaring as they realized that there was nothing of value left to take. I knew that we were in danger, that these men were capable of unspeakable violence if they didn't get what they wanted. We had to find a way to escape, to outsmart them and get back to safety. But as I racked my brain for a plan, I could see the fear in my family's eyes. They were depending on me to keep them safe, to get them out of this nightmare alive. I knew that I had to act fast, before it was too late. With a sinking feeling in my stomach, I realized that our only chance of survival was to fight back, to take control of the situation and turn the tables on our captors. Gathering my courage, I whispered a plan to my family, outlining our escape route and the steps we would need to take to overpower the pirates and retake control of the yacht. With grim determination, we set our plan into motion, moving quickly and quietly to avoid alerting the pirates to our intentions. As we crept through the darkened corridors of the yacht, I could feel my heart pounding in my chest, the adrenaline coursing through my veins as we neared our goal. And then, just when it seemed like all hope was lost, we saw our chance, a moment of distraction, a lapse in the pirates' vigilance that gave us the opening we needed to strike. With a shout, we lunged forward, overpowering the nearest pirate and wresting his weapon from his grasp. The deck erupted into chaos as the pirates fought back, but we were ready. We had planned for this moment, trained for this moment, and we weren't going to let anything stand in our way. In the end, it was a brutal and bloody struggle, but we emerged victorious, battered and bruised, but alive. The pirates were subdued, their reign of terror brought to an end by our bravery and determination. As we sailed away from the scene of our ordeal, I felt a sense of relief wash over me, relief that we had survived, that we had escaped the clutches of those ruthless criminals and lived to tell the tale. I was excited when my friends and I planned a camping trip in the ancient redwood forest of California. We were all looking forward to disconnecting from the hustle and bustle of daily life and immersing ourselves in the beauty of nature. Little did we know, our idyllic getaway would soon turn into a nightmare beyond our wildest imaginations. As we ventured deeper into the forest, the towering trees enveloped us in their shadowy embrace casting long, eerie shadows that danced in the dappled sunlight. The air was thick with the scent of pine and the sounds of wildlife echoed all around us, creating an atmosphere of serene tranquility. But as the sun began to set and darkness descended upon the forest, a sense of unease settled over our group. We set up camp in a clearing, our tents pitched beneath the canopy of ancient redwoods, their branches stretching towards the sky like gnarled fingers reaching for the heavens. That night, as we sat around the campfire, sharing stories and laughter, a strange sensation washed over me. It was as if we were being watched, as if unseen eyes were peering out at us from the darkness beyond the trees. I brushed off my unease as nothing more than nerves, attributing it to the unfamiliarity of our surroundings. But as the hours passed and the night grew darker, the feeling only intensified. Then, in the dead of night, we heard it, a low, guttural chanting echoing through the forest, sending shivers down our spines. We huddled together in fear, our hearts pounding in our chests as the sound grew louder and closer. With trembling hands, we ventured out into the darkness, 
following the eerie chanting to its source. What we discovered was beyond anything we could have imagined, a remote cult compound hidden deep within the heart of the forest. The cultists were cloaked in dark robes, their faces obscured by masks as they moved with an otherworldly grace, their chanting growing louder and more frenzied with each passing moment. We watched in horror as they performed twisted rituals beneath the flickering light of torches, their movements fluid and hypnotic as they danced around a roaring bonfire. Suddenly, we realized we were not alone in the forest. We were intruders in their sacred sanctuary, and the cultists viewed us as trespassers in their domain. In a panic, we turned to flee, but it was too late. We were surrounded on all sides by the cultists, their eyes burning with a fanatical zeal as they closed in on us. With nowhere left to run, we braced ourselves for the worst, knowing that our lives hung in the balance. But just as it seemed all hope was lost, a miracle occurred, the sound of approaching sirens pierced the night air, signaling the arrival of law enforcement. The cultists scattered into the darkness like shadows, disappearing into the depths of the forest as quickly as they had appeared. We were left shaken and traumatized, but alive, saved from a fate worse than death by the timely intervention of the authorities. As we emerged from the forest, blinking in the harsh light of dawn, I couldn't help but feel a profound sense of gratitude wash over me. We had narrowly escaped the clutches of the cultists, our lives forever changed by the harrowing ordeal we had endured. Though the memories of that night would haunt me for the rest of my days, I was grateful to be alive and back in the safety of civilization once more. And as we drove away from the ancient redwood forest, I made a silent vow never to return to that cursed place again. I was leading a team of experienced climbers on an expedition to conquer the treacherous peaks of the Himalayas. Our goal was to summit one of the highest and most challenging peaks in the world, a feat that would test our skills and push us to our limits. As we made our way up the mountain, the air grew thinner and colder, and the landscape became increasingly rugged and unforgiving. But we were determined to press on, fueled by the thrill of adventure and the promise of reaching the summit. However, our journey took a terrifying turn when a sudden avalanche struck, engulfing us in a torrent of snow and ice. The force of the avalanche was immense, sweeping us off our feet and burying us beneath tons of snow. For a moment, everything went dark, and I feared that this was the end, that we would never escape the icy grip of the mountain. But then, miraculously, I felt myself being pulled from the snow by my teammates, their faces grim with determination as they worked to free us from our icy tomb. As we emerged from the snow, battered and bruised but alive, we realized the true extent of our predicament. The avalanche had left us stranded in a remote mountain pass, cut off from the outside world and facing the harsh reality of survival in one of the most unforgiving environments on Earth. We quickly set to work taking makeshift shelters out of the snow and rationing our supplies to make them last as long as possible. But as the days turned into weeks, and our food and water began to run dangerously low, desperation set in. The cold was relentless, gnawing at our bones and numbing our limbs until we could barely feel them anymore. And the constant threat of avalanches loomed over us like a dark cloud, a constant reminder of the deadly power of the mountain. But perhaps the most terrifying aspect of our ordeal was the isolation, the knowledge that we were completely cut off from the outside world, with no way of calling for help or knowing if anyone even knew we were missing. As the days stretched into weeks, our spirits began to wane, and hope seemed like nothing more than a distant memory. But we refused to give up, drawing strength from each other and clinging to the belief that we would survive against all odds. Then. Just when it seemed like all hope was lost, we heard the faint sound of helicopter blades overhead. We scrambled to make ourselves visible, waving frantically and shouting for help as the helicopter descended from the sky. When the rescue team finally reached us, we were delirious with relief, our bodies weak and our minds clouded with exhaustion. But as the air lifted us to safety, I knew that we had survived the deadliest of challenges, and that nothing would ever be the same again. 
As we flew away from the mountain, leaving behind the icy peaks and the horrors we had endured, I felt a profound sense of gratitude wash over me. We had faced our darkest fears and emerged victorious, stronger and more resilient than we ever thought possible. And as I looked out at the vast expanse of the Himalayas disappearing beneath the clouds, I knew that our ordeal would stay with us forever, a reminder of the fragility of life and the indomitable spirit of the human soul.